The gameplay you're watching isn't from me, it's from Tasek, an Apex Legends pro player that took part in the pre-season invitational as part of Justice Esports at the time. He's from Korea and after dying to him, I thought of an interesting idea for a video. What does it take to make an Apex Predator? Or perhaps even further, what does it take to make a pro player in Apex Legends? I wanted to analyse his gameplay and understand why he's able to effortlessly climb the ranks of Apex Predator whilst I'm left struggling to get out of Diamond 4. I wanted it to be a learning exercise for me and perhaps what I learned could be useful for you too because I feel like a lot of you are in the same situation. So I've never done anything like this before so the spectator camera may not be the best at times but we do capture most of the action. Now the first thing that we noticed or I noticed is that they focused their targets immediately even though you know they had the freedom to shoot who they want they have good aim probably each player in this squad is very talented they focus players very well that's obviously something that's hard to do in a non-pre-made squad but it is certainly something that you need to consider now all of these players as you can see have pretty crazy stats they are very experienced players if we watch them we can see that their overall skills in terms of just general movements really good everything from you know their aim to their movement is decent so they've got down the basics so obviously the first thing to consider is well you need to get the basics down right you need to be at least decent at aiming and movement to be able to get past diamond four so yeah there's always room for improvements there so if you feel like you're not too great at that then try to look at how you can improve your personal skill but as we keep watching you'll see that it's not so much about that as it is other things now as we'll see Tasek goes really ahead of his squad right here but He's playing Rafe and Rafe has a lot of ability to get out of the situation, so that's fine. But what's really interesting is that he spots some enemies, okay? He spots enemies, but he doesn't engage. He waits for his teammates to come up and get involved too, so that he has a chance to kind of engage them together. He spots this target here kind of out of, like, it was unexpected that there was an enemy here, as you can see. But the team's already there, ready to engage. We see Tasek shooting them, but Zenko is right there to engage too. And, I mean, they're all pretty much, you know, they have this area. They're not being too aggressive. They're taking down damage from a long distance. Once they got down a kill, then they're able to push up more. So once again, we're seeing them kind of focus the same targets. And as you can see, their aim isn't, like, super amazing. It's not like they're the top 0.1% aimers or anything. Um, I mean... Yeah, the aim is great, as you saw later, like at the right at the end of the game. The aim is great, but it's not god tier. It's like you don't need god tier aim to be an apex predator by the looks of things. It's focusing your targets together as a squad that seems to be kind of taking a priority in terms of what matters the most. And we can see here how much movement is a priority too. Being able to stay agile and aware of your surroundings is also very important. And this is where another skill comes into play and that's just general map awareness and positioning. This ring is coming in and they all bail. They use the portal to get out and get into the zone so that then they can position themselves to take out the squad that's outside the zone. So, so far two things are very clear. That is one, focusing the same target, and two, just positioning better. Also, I don't know if this is just like a, a BM or if this is a glitch, but this is just ridiculous. <laughs> Still just endlessly punching this poor Wraith, which is really hilarious. There we go. I don't know if that was a glitch or what. Really funny. So at this point, they've been looting a little bit, and now they're kind of just making their way into the zone. But now that they're kind of more together and collected, it seems they're being very cautious with how they're approaching fights. You know, if they see a player across the map, they're not just going to start firing at them straight away. They'll wait till they're all in a position to fire together. And once again, they're prioritizing targets. You'll see later how they're focusing on the same target. And that makes sense, you know. If you can get down one player quicker by focusing that player together, then you're going to turn a fight from a 3v3 into a 3v2 and the odds go in your favour so much more. It makes a lot of sense. Now, if you're playing solo, how are you going to deal with that? Well, 
the first thing I guess to realize is that if you want to get to Predator, the easiest way is to find a team that's going to be able to get there with you. And I know that is an absolute task in itself at times, but it's, you know, it's a challenge. But it's going to be something that's going to make it so much easier. Being able to communicate and prioritize the same target at the same time is going to be really important too. So ultimately, if you can get yourself a team, you'll be in a much better situation, someone that you can coordinate with and build synergy with and get better with over time. That's something that I don't have myself, you know, and I still have hope that maybe it's possible to, you know, stay solo and get to Predator. I know some absolute insane players can do it. Um, the only thing, obviously, you're still going to have to try and make the most of your teammates in a way that allows you to, you know, work together with them. Now that you can get assists for, I mean, you get kill points for assists, it doesn't matter if you get the kills necessarily. So watch here, they both target, they're waiting. They're really kind of waiting to play out the situation. And they all focus that same player at the same time, which is a really smart play, you know. Waited for that moment to try and just burst down that player straight away. And once again, they're all focusing the same Pathfinder, trying to just take down one knot. It's like you can see here that the players they're going against aren't incompetent either. And we'll see here, Watson gets knocked too, which leaves just Rafe. And now this situation is very unfortunate. You know, you think, okay, they could have done better there. I mean, they did pretty well. They targeted the same people at the same time, they did a lot of damage, but they just got unlucky really. But that is just the nature of Battle Royals. But they are still already in top 4, and between them they have about 4-5 to five kill points each. So if you want to rank up, all you really need is to get top 5 and have, like, take down 2 squads between your whole squad. So I guess, yeah, if you wanted to play solo still, maybe one thing you could try is just stay with your team as much as you can. As much as they may frustrate you, stay with your team and then try to go from there. Try If they start attacking somebody, then use that to your advantage and attack them with your team. Instead of focus on trying to get kills for yourself, just try and get kills for the team because you're going to be getting assists anyway. For some reason that Bangalore was shooting Watson for so, so long and Rafe managed to pull off a self-revive. Now, here's another thing that comes into kind of getting better skill level, I guess, is being very careful about late game positioning. This Wraith was waiting for a long time for the enemies to back off into the zone. She goes for the player loot boxes. There's a potential for a revive here. Now watch what she's doing here. She's paying very close attention. I know I keep calling it she, it's just Wraith, you know. Very close attention to the zone. Just if there's any straggling players, they're being very careful and cautious. Now that they're solo, Placements is the most important thing. There could be loads of other solo players hiding around. So they're looking around being very aware of their surroundings, which is obviously another skill that needs to be considered. Tasik then tries to go for the team revive and unfortunately they get shot at in the process, which means they have no option but to back out. And they make a very good decision about positioning here. They've already got the portal down so they can go through the portal and then they can step through the zone around the other side of the building and just completely get out of there, follow the edge of the ring. I mean, it was it was a fortunate situation for sure, but it was a smart fort too, you know. They played around cover and fortunately they managed to get out and they stayed alive. And at this point it's just playing very safe, playing very passive till the very end ring and at that point it's just down to luck whether you can get into a position where you can get enough kills or not so whilst Tasik is waiting and hiding we can talk a little bit more about kind of the summary of what's happened so essentially movement and aim are the two core mechanics i'd say in apex that you can practice as a solo player and they are important but ranking up it's not as important as working with your team to focus the same opponents and another skill is general map awareness, understanding where other enemies may be, understanding how the ring is going to come in and how you can kind of use that to play more cautiously. And, you know, so those are the top four things. One is working with your team to focus kills. That's going to be really hard 
if you're solo. So yes, playing pre-made is absolutely going to make things easier, but I want to try in a later stream of mine to see if I can try and follow around my teammates more and try to focus the same people they're focusing and play through their mindset and see if we can get more wins that way or more rank ups. Usually I'm playing, focusing on trying to get kills for myself so that I can secure RP, but maybe I'm looking at it too wrong. So anyway, Rafe's just waiting here for the ring to come in, nothing too exciting. Then we have that awesome moment at the end where Rafe managed to squad wipe them. So thank you so much for watching. This is kind of like a moment where, I mean, when you're Diamond 4, you play against the top predators in the world it happens unfortunately because there's such a small player base especially if you're in less populated regions but either way it was a good learning experience for me so if you complain that you're dying to the top predators in the world over time stop a minute and actually watch what they're doing and you may learn things i learned here that as much as it sucks you really do need pre-mades to consistently rank up and if you don't then you need to just play with your team and we'll see if we can make that work besides that aim and Movement skill are important, but not so much. So that's all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will leave it to the end clip again, and then I'll see you in the comments. If you want to watch Tasic, I'll put links to their Twitch and their Twitter in the description and the pinned comment. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.